you know, in the context of what you're you're doing and what you're building um, and what your team's working on, what do you think the impact of blockchain technology would be? Well, blockchain as a whole is a different conversation than what we use it for, which is a separate use case conversation. But what we use blockchain for is the preservation of proof of financial state, right? So um, when you create a financial statement, it's based upon uh, two things, well, more than two things, but it's mainly based upon, uh, for instance, the accumulation of costs over a specific period, and then the balance of assets at the end of a period, right? So how much cash do you have today? That's an instant, right? How much revenue did you generate between January 1st and March 31st? That's over a period, right? So when you create, uh, uh, financial statements are filed all over the world with every regulator around the world by you know, all publicly traded companies. Yeah. Uh, not just public companies, but also private companies. So um, proofs that they haven't been tampered with, which link to proofs of the integrity of the information used to create those financial statements, which are further linked to proofs that the transactions that have occurred in the company that make up the contents of the accounting system, which was used to create a financial statement, are not tampered with, right? And if they are tampered with, there's proof of what existed before and what now exists after the change in state, right? Yeah. So um, blockchain has uh, the ability to as far as impact, um, what we do has an impact. What is the impact? Well, we think that it could impact the rate with which central banks debase their currencies. So how, how is that? Well, let's assume that the world adopted audit chain, right? Yeah, yeah. You have a much higher degree of integrity and reliability of the information. Banks, central banks, government agencies, they rely on information filed with them in order to make or publish economic statistics on the one hand, which are then relied upon by central banks to attenuate monetary policy on the other hand, right? So what if I told you that 20 or so percent of that information is either flawed or wrong? Well, then you might say, well, then central banks are making monetary policy decisions based on flawed information coming out of uh, government and economic statistics. Yeah. Right? Yes. So then that's a huge impact, right? Well, what if I say to you that um, our ability for you to create a sustainability report, right, um, under ESG rules allows you to measure the diversity of your organization, the pay grade of the diversity group as compared to the rest of the organization, right, and the verification of sound governance procedures, right, who plays a role in government? right? In a centralized entity, is part of the diversity group playing a role in governance? Or are they not, right? Yeah. So all these things can be proven and articulated. So when you prove and articulate this stuff and you preserve it using a blockchain, well, then it can't be tampered with. Yeah. And if it is tampered with, then you have a break in provenance from the cryptographic architecture. The hash values no longer match, right? So, and then you use, um, for instance, uh, the impact of uh, uh, the impact on, well, if you're creating financial statements and validating financial statements, then your, your impact is going to be also on the accounting and professional services profession, right? Yeah. Right now, there are four main accounting and professional services companies that 
um, play a role in validating and reviewing the articulation and expression of changes in state periodically by an economic entity. So if you think about an economic entity like a computer scientist would, that's a state machine. So one input may trigger one or more, two or more outputs, right? So, um, and the more technical uh, architecture a corporation might have, the more likely it is to be, the more likely it should be looked at as a state machine. So those changes in state need to be articulate, right? Right, right. So, um, for instance, if a financial statement, uh, and in our world it is, it's machine readable, well then, let's say a bank has one of our tools that is able to read the financial statement. And if there are certain elements of a financial statement that change, for instance, the loan to value or the stockholders equity goes below a certain level or the profits per share go down below a certain level, it allows them to make in, uh, an instant changes in uh, the terms of a loan agreement, right? Yeah. So instead of litigating it, you know, where you have to fly on planes or drive cars to a venue somewhere you agree to in advance, uh, you take some smart contracts and machine readable information and you mechanize the litigation on the spot so that when it happens, both sides have waived their right to litigation. So it triggers a adjustment in the terms of um, a loan agreement, for, for, yeah. for, for example, right? So and now you're saving taxpayer money because now nobody has to go and spend money on a judge and a jury who's got to recruit jurors, right? Or a yeah. bench trial. And we spend our tax dollars on these venues. Right? They're public institutions, right? Yeah. So what if you can substantially reduce the amount of litigation by mechanizing these otherwise disputes, right? That's yeah. That's really high impact. But I think the biggest one is uh, the, 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 the probability, and it's always probability because politicians spend money, uh, you know, it's use it or lose it, right? You have a budget, right? Just because uh, something becomes more efficient, believe me, they're going to find a new way to spend that budget, right? They're not giving it back to the taxpayers. You've been robbed. <laughs> So the question yeah. is, how do we reduce the infrastructure that adjudicates the administration of budgets that cover these things, right? Like yeah. the Bureau of Labor Statistics. I don't know how many employees there are. I don't know how many employees it takes to create um, a release of economic statistics that's, that measures how many non-farm payrolls there were last month, right? Versus yeah. the year before. So... Um, this is the type of impact that we hope it will create. Now let's look at the investor impact. An investor is either relying on a money manager to look at all these things, or they're making decisions. If they're not trading because they're ignorant or they're careless and they're in a hurry and they're using charts, well, then you're, you're, you're a fundamental investor and you're reading financial statements, right? A money manager is responsible for reading financial statements in order to make a decision, right? To allocate yeah. in a certain way. So what if the same information, which has, uh, which 20% of which contains flaws or inconsistencies, well, then the world's money managers and institutions are allocating capital based in part by on information that is flawed, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, we, happen, think... we happen to know that government created and prescribed financial reporting scheme taxonomies contain subtle flaws. And if they contain subtle flaws, that means the report models contain subtle flaws, which means the reports themselves contain flaws. Yeah. But there isn't any other software in the industry that can detect those flaws because they build specifically to regulatory specifications, whereas we build to exceed the standards set by regulators. So we're able to detect these things. And, you know. Yeah, that could be massive, massive game changer. I, I think, um, I mean, what I, what I think about when you, when you sort of describe this, I think about transparency, I think about impact in terms of 
uh, lowering costs. But I also think about um, as, a, as having been an operator in, in businesses, there's always this, you talked about flaws, there's always this um, making decisions based on sort of lagging indicators, right? And I think that also happens, uh, you know, at a much broader level, you know, um, when, when, when they're making, we're making decisions and setting policy that Im impacts the economy um, or impacts investors or impacts the business based on data that is a little bit late, you know? The way it kind of falls out very practically when you're running a business is sometimes like, let's say you sign a deal, but it's it's like when the money becomes, you know, wh when you will actually sort of um, account for that revenue coming in as just as an example. And sometimes as an investor, you're making a decision not knowing that a big deal might have been signed. Do you know what I mean? Like. My yeah. point is, my point is that blockchain, the real timeness and giving, whether it's investors or the business itself or the government, exposure to real time data, I think is one of the big, um, is is like going to be a huge, huge impact if if folks are allowed to develop products and. An auto chain, for example, is is technology that is adopted more broadly. I think that's going to be as one of the huge impacts as well. Is that you're no longer dealing with with lagging indicators. That you really have a true sense um, of you know how the company's doing or how they've done that quarter or you know what maybe might may show up in next quarter that you couldn't expose in a traditional report. Well, there is a section in a uh, in the United States when you are a public company, you're obligated to file periodic reports. Yeah. In the reports, there's a section called subsequent events, and that's a narrative to describe material events that have occurred between the time that the period ended that covers the actual financial statements and the time that that document was actually filed. Right. Uh, but yes, these are history books that are filed with the SEC. So when, when, when a period ends, let's say December 31st, you undergo an audit and then you've got 30 days to file the period ending December 31, the prior year. Mm -hmm. So starting February 1 is when, I'm uh, sorry, uh, yeah, February 1 is when everyone is obligated, oh, January 30, I, I forget, uh, is obligated to report the full year, right? So, um, and yeah, that's a lot of time that goes by. It's a history book. They're filing, yeah. it, right? Whereas if you look at activity on a blockchain, that's happening right now, and I'm seeing it right now. Now there's no context to what I'm seeing, which is my point, right? Yeah. If you add context to what you're seeing or the activity that's being undertaken by a single project that lives on chain, right? Yeah. So if they raised $50 million, well, where do they store that 50 million, right? Well, yeah. it's for these three addresses, right? Now these four addresses are, here's your operating account, here's your payroll account, is your expense account and other uh, uh, accounts that you would use to segregate the value that you possess, which is your operating capital and your pay, money used for payroll, right? So, yeah. um, you know, there should be context, right? So- um, And that's we, something that audited- We pay everybody in crypto, right? So yeah. all on-chain information. So we're exposing information but there's no context. So if you have real-time financial report con uh, reporting context where you're, ex uh, uh, you're using accounting rules to articulate the financial state of a on-chain enterprise, right? Yeah. That provides a valuable service or that's building a valuable service. That's useful for people. Why should you have to, you know, I remember we used to get in, I used to get inbound messages all, all the time. How come you transferred 100 ETH from that address to this address? Right. He said, well, that we pay, you know, we pay our employees with ETH and uh, consultants rather. And 
you know, uh, the, in, the one trend, that transaction from one address to the other was the movement from operating to payroll and then from payroll to 12 or whatever, 10 or whatever other recipients, right? Right. So inv investors are watching the, what's happening on chain. Yeah, that's right. Well, here's the other thing. Um, you know, ENS is a big project now. Um, and from an accounting standpoint, if you get uh, a domain .eth, right? Uh, Yoli Chisholm .eth. Yeah. That's the name of the project, let's just say, right? Yeah. Well, then you can say um, operating at Yoli Chisholm .eth, uh, expenses at Yoli Chisholm .eth, uh, payroll at Yoli Chisholm .eth, and so on and so on and so on. Right. Where all of those addresses are actually named after the accounts in a chart of accounts. Ah. And that you can, you know, it becomes a hell of a lot easier for somebody to calculate the articulation of financial state, but you have to include every single vendor. Oh, right? wow. Sooner or later, you're going to have a vendor that doesn't accept crypto as payment for services like cell phone providers. Right. right? Unless they, I don't, I haven't heard, but you know, maybe they started, but um, you know, Google just started uh, announced that they're using Coinbase to accept crypto payments, right? Yeah, yeah. That's going to be good, right? Um, so a lot more vendors are starting to accept crypto payments, and if you can name each of the addresses based upon your chart of accounts, well, then you literally uh, what's missing is the logic that treats the transactions from the instant balance to uh, a roll forward of expenses over a period of time, which then rolls up at the end of a period into a balance, right? Yeah. So, and that requires accounting logic. Yeah. But, you know, we're, we're like just about there where an entity can live entirely on chain with the exception of cell phone providers, right? That's super impactful, I think. Um, you also mentioned context quite a bit. Can you talk about how Audit Chain thinks about um, NFTs? Because I think it, the NFT, certain NFTs will have the ability to provide context, you know, like it, certain types of organizations or certain verticals, certain industries have some sort of level of ana analytics that they do that they might think is proprietary to them or their businesses or to the industry. And NFTs can be leveraged for that. Is, is that not the case? And, and can't Audit Chain enable that? Yeah, well, we, so every industry has its own ontology, right? Yeah. Which is how it arranges things. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, ours is no different, right? Financial reporting, audit analysis, accounting is an ontology of things arranged in a certain way. There's literally data dictionaries right? Yeah. Since the U.S. GAAP uh, taxonomy for financial reporting has about 17,500 tags, right? Definitions that are tagged so that they're machine readable, right? Mm -hmm. So an NFT could be used to represent each one of those tags. Right. So now you know, if you're a regulator, now you know which of the definitions were used, how many times they were used because you're making a call yeah. across the internet and you're calling those tags, right? And those tags play a role in logic, accounting logic, reporting logic, right? Right. So each one of those little pieces of logic could be represented by an NFT. So now what we've basically done is we'll give you the software for free. The intellect you have to pay for, right? Right. Now we didn't invent this, you know, I think Gillette might've, right? Except you pay for the razor, right? <laughs> and you buy the razor yeah. blades. That's how they make all their money, right? Yeah. So instead of measuring how much to charge a large complex global organization, it becomes very easy. It's based upon the number of tags and rules Log, pieces of logic that they use to compose and articulate their financial state. 
And then the same holds true when you validate those financial statements or audit them, right? Yeah. You're using additional pieces of logic, which really reverse engineers the financial statement to determine whether or not it is materially uh, and fairly presented, right? And I'm using yeah. this as an auditor. But in block speak, validated, proven to be correct, right? Yeah. So, because in our world, financial statements are logical systems. They're not made out of paper that you, you, know, you spit out or export out of an accounting system via PDF or, or, or um, on paper. They're yeah. logical systems and they're machine readable, right? So that an auditor can read them with another machine that reads those financial statements. And in our case, our Pacioli logic and reasoning engine reads, understands, digests financial statements and outputs whether or not there are inconsistencies and where, what the nature of those inconsistencies might be, right? So uh, and that's complete automation. So that has a huge impact on the labor force. What are we gonna do with one point, uh, well, over 3 million accountants in the world, right? Yeah. They're gonna have to learn how to do other things. Maybe they'll create these little pieces of logic, right? Control, yeah. process control NFTs is what we call them, right? So now what if the genomics, study of genomics wants to take their ontology, digitize that and create this semantic layer so that they can use uh, uh, that data and they can uh, create an ontology for their space. What we're doing for accounting, audit, and financial reporting can be done for almost any industry, right? Right, right. So uh, that requires... there's, there's pieces of logic. There's logic in everything, right? Right. And when you deal with logic, logic is designed to constrain or mechanize the uh, interpretive constraints of a particular rule, right? So for instance, if the Federal Accounting Standards Board says uh, you should now treat crypto assets with fair value accounting, well, uh, most of those controls already exist, but on our network, anytime a new accounting rule is introduced, you're gonna have the accountants race to create the control that fits into the control set that you would use to articulate your financial state using that new accounting rule, right? right. But you have all this data that didn't exist before, right? Yeah. So now everybody's gonna be able to know how many times that rule or these rules were used, who were they used by, right? And um, that's very valuable data, really. Absolutely. Right? It's, it's very exciting. I think that um, it's going to be interesting to watch um, adoption over the years and see the impact that Audit Chain is going to have, um, not only on the accounting profession, but I think in just financial reporting overall. And then, as you mentioned, other industries as they think about leveraging this framework. How can developers get involved? Like, let's say a developer has an idea for an NFT or for um, you know, an app that wants to leverage this technology, how can they get involved? So, well, let's take a professional services firm, yeah. a, small, a small one, right? Maybe they got 20 people. Um, maybe they can create controls that allow CFAs to perform analysis on a financial statement, right? And the perfect example I always use is because it's a rather difficult uh, uh, a derivation, right? Let's say I, I, I want to determine what the net tangible book value per share on a fully diluted basis is, right? right. What do I have to do? I have to deduct all the liabilities and the goodwill from all the assets and I come up with the equity, but that's not enough. Then what I have to do is I have to count the number of shares that are issuable upon conversion of all presently outstanding convertible securities, right? And add that number to the total number of shares outstanding. 
Right. Then I have to take the consideration paid, if any, and add it to paid in capital, which brings my equity up higher. Then after I do all that, then I divide the net equity by the total new number of shares outstanding. And I come up with net tangible book value per share on a fully diluted basis, right? As if every security was converted. Right. So, so there's a lot of opportunity for interesting. That's just one. To be built. But, yeah. But let me uh, let me explain how that type of control has to get built. First, it's going to take another control, which is the accounting equation. Right. It's going to read a financial statement. It's going to make the deduction. Then you're going to build a new control that's going to search for all of the presently outstanding convertible securities in all of the report elements where those, those convertible securities are disclosed, right? It's gonna perform a calculation, right? Then you'll have another rule that adds the consideration paid to the company, if any, to the paid in capital, Right? And you'll have another calculation, which then just, uh, determines the new number of shares. Out. So you've got a number of controls yeah. represented by an NFT. So if you have, for instance, like we own the accounting equation. So no matter what you do, you're always going to call the accounting equation because that plays a role in the accounting ontology, reporting ontology, audit ontology, right? Right. That's the Burj Khalifa of all controls. If you right. look at this real estate, right? Because you're gonna pay a toll every time you use that control and all the other controls. Right. So what is a series of controls that would be appropriate for analysts? One of them is the net tangible book value per share fully diluted calculation or primary, right? Mm -hmm. um, and there's a ton of other controls that you can, that you can create, right? Yeah. And you can create a formula in an Excel spreadsheet and point to namespaces in a financial report where other controls are used to do those calculations, right? Right. Which I provide for you. You don't have to be a programmer to do this. That's very you cool. You have to understand accounting logic. Yeah. That is that. very, very cool. That's a lot of impact that I think Audit Chain could have um, and is going to have um on not only the financial industry but potentially other industries um and a lot for folks to continue to learn and you know we are interested in in working with accountants and and reporting agencies and um uh, developers so definitely please reach out uh love to hear from you if you're watching us on youtube definitely comment um and visit audit chain um Dot finance if you'd like to get in touch. And if you're listening to us on audio, uh, thanks again for joining us. Please share. And uh, we will be in touch with another episode next week. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Yoli.